What's up, gamer girl? Over the last month, I've been playing all of the Game Pass games. That's like over 250 games. Just kind of getting my first impressions of them and seeing what they're all like to play. Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics. That's the actual name of the title. This game is a tie-in with the Netflix series that lasted one season. The game is really pretty boring. It's slow and it plays like kind of a shitty mobile game if I'm being honest. Next bad game is Fractured Minds. So Fractured Minds is an indie game that is played across six chapters. It lasts like 20 minutes to play the whole game. It dives, or like dips its toe into like themes of mental health. And it plays more like a kind of puzzle game, I guess, but it's not that engaging. It's pretty simple. Giving credit to where it's due though, the game was developed by one person and proceeds go back to mental health organizations, which is cool, but the whole game kind of feels a bit pointless. There was a lot of other games I wasn't impressed by, but again, I'm not playing these games very long. I'm just getting my first impressions. And I know some people might really like these games, so not yucking your yum. Let's move on. I have been watching The Bachelor lately, and it is not good TV. Just jump the fence. And perhaps you could say it's a trash show, and I think I would agree with you. That's kind of how you feel when you play Alan Wake here. Alan Wake came out in 2010, and it doesn't show its age that well. God damn it, Alice! No. <laughs> It's a bit overambitious. It's trying to be a psychological thriller, shooter, horror game all at once. It feels like it's going a million different directions, but it's fun. I don't know. Story. Have you ever wanted to explore Disneyland but didn't have the money or the time or maybe you just didn't like Disney more we're more of a you're more of a Shrek guy maybe. Well, if you didn't have the money or resources then you don't need to, because there's a game that perfectly fills that void. Disneyland Adventures. This game is admittedly more directed towards kids, I get that, but all the character models have this weird, uncanny valley, polar express thing going on. Everything's really easy, and it's a, kid ga it's a kid's game. So it's really light on your brain, which I appreciate. So you got the classics in here, including Master Chief Collection, Gears of War, Minecraft, Power Rangers. <laughs> what is that called? Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, classic game. I had never played Arkham Knight before this, and that one was super fun. Whoa. Golf Oscar five, six. Dude, this, this is, is so board. sweet. Why have I never it's played awesome. this? There's this game called Pandemic. This is a great game that really lets you role play what it would be like to live in a world that's undergoing a global pandemic. I mean, I can't imagine what that's like. And then we got Alien Isolation. Um, I would not recommend trying to play it before it's downloaded. They have the ready to start function on Xbox where you can play a game while it's downloading. Um, it said you could didn't really work it. that well for me. But once it is downloaded fully, I think it's worth playing. Deep Rock Galactic is so good. It's such a good game. The game feels like a kind of matchup between Minecraft and Left 4 Dead. The character you play is this gnome whose job it is to mine ore and resources on distant planets, which you think is easy, except there's a million friggin' bugs that are trying to kill you. It's fun to play through all the four characters, but I had the most fun playing as the driller. You can dig through tunnels and walls a lot quicker than most people with all the other three characters. And the flamethrower is just amazing. They don't have split screen co-op, so if you're looking for like a Left 4 Dead experience, it's not necessarily going to be that, but it's still super fun online co-op. Is Brad the only one? <laughs> Yes, get in here, get in here, get in there! I ended up playing Celeste a lot more after the initial quick play with it. The art, sound design, gameplay feels kind of arcadey. Uh, it really drew me in. It gets frustrating, but the feeling of getting past the stage is really satisfying after like 
300, 400 deaths or however many times I died. That's not an exaggeration. I would give this a keep it on your hard drive out of 10. Getting first impressions of 250 games is difficult. Uh, there's some games that are gonna have really impressive, punchy gameplay right off the bat. Others are gonna be a lot slower. It can be kind of strange playing the Game Pass catalog in alphabetical order. I played a kid's game, the Disney Rush game. Mr. Pricklepants is counting on us. And then the next game I was playing Rise where you're just like soiling people in ancient Rome. So I still recommend anyone pick up Game Pass. The selection has so many games that I'm sure you're gonna find something that's worth playing.